Hey guys, Dana with Swim Paradise Cotton Candy. So today I am going to show you guys how to package cotton candy. And this will be in different containers. I've got the actual deli container with a lid, three mil bag, clear bag, and it holds three ounces of cotton candy. And then I'm also going to do a mylar bag as well. I'm just strictly in this video going to show you guys how to package. If you want to learn any more about the shelf life of each of these containers, how long the cotton candy will actually last in a bag in each of the, or in a container, I will put a link below for a blog post that I did on shelf life and it's very detailed on shelf life for all of these containers. So let's get started with packaging the cotton candy. Today I am going to use the champagne cotton candy floss that we make. It is USDA certified organic, totally clean and totally yummy. So we are going to make up some champagne. I'm just gonna pour it right into my machine. Today I am using the gold metal whirlwind machine. This sugar floss does work just as fine in a, the small residential machines and the mid-grade machines like Avivo or, um, as well. Okay, we'll get the machine going here. It's gonna take just a minute for it to heat up and we will get packing. I am going to start with the containers. These containers hold uh, one ounce of cotton candy. All right, so I like to just grab the cotton candy, pull it out. I did want to mention too, that when it's nice and warm, straight out of the machine, nice and fresh, that is when you're going to be able to mold it the best into whatever packaging, whatever container you're using. So now that it's nice and warm, I'm just going to kind of tuck my hand in the side and just kind of keep rolling it in until it's nice uh, and in there and formed. So, so far that's what we've got. I want to top that off a little bit. That's just a little low to me. So I'm going to take a little bit more. I'm not going to use all of this. I'm going to use about half, leave the rest there. Just going to very, very gently roll. You, it, the more you handle the cotton candy and the harder you press, it's going to compact it. It's not going to be light and fluffy and yummy. So I leave about that much. See how it's sticking out a little bit there? I'm just gonna press gently with the back of my hand so I don't leave any fingerprints. And you can see how it's bouncing back and up. Hopefully you guys can see that. You want a little bit of spring to the cotton candy. If it's not springing back up just a little bit, it's in there, it's compacted way too hard. You do not want cotton candy to be too compacted. It's not gonna get to the customer fresh tasting anymore. So there's one container ready to go. I'm gonna do two more containers just so you guys can see. I grab my extra little bit. Container, again, just kind of tucking in, gently, gently pressing it. I'm gonna turn my heat back up a little bit. Again, just kind of twirling it a tiny bit, but again, I'm really trying to keep my fingers on the edge of the container. And now I have like, this is the perfect amount for this container. So I'm just gonna take it and kind of roll it a little bit. And then again, with the back of the hand, press down. You really, really do not want fingerprints in this. And if you use the front of your hand, it's gonna happen. So again, I've got a little bit of spring to it, perfect. And then you can see the top. I use the back of my hand so it's nice and flat. I'm gonna turn my heat back up a little bit. This one's good to go. Lids on there. I did want to mention too, you want a nice thick container. The thicker the plastic for these containers and the better the seal, the lid is, the less air and moisture that can get in there and shrink the cotton candy. Moisture is a cotton candy's worst enemy. You do not want moisture. So again, last time with this one, I just really wanted to show the technique. Just trying to tuck it in along the edges. A little bit, just need a little bit more there. So I'm gonna take about half of this. really gently, I mean, I'm barely handling this cotton candy. I'm gonna just kind of curve it on the top there. And then the back of the hand, one last time. You can see how it's springing back up a little bit. We do not want to press it too hard in there. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay, so our containers are good. Again, this has an awesome seal. This container keeps the moisture. Bar this is a really good container. Barrier from the moisture, never have shrinkage. These containers hold one ounce of cotton candy. We're gonna move on to the three mil bag. This holds three ounces of cotton candy. I'm gonna turn my heat back up a little bit. 
get some of the cotton candy out. Again, when I'm handling this right now, you guys, I mean, I am like literally barely trying to press on, on it. I don't want to shrink it or compact it. We really just always try to think like as light and fluffy as possible. So I'm just stuffing it a little bit in there. Again, I'm just trying to shape it enough to get it in the bag. And that's honestly about it. So that's about as high as we want to go. And then we're going to heat seal this in just a minute and I'll show you how to do that. Do two more bags just so you guys can really see the technique here being used. Again, just trying to shape it enough just to get it in. Some people really like to do a bunch of like smaller little pieces in these bags. So I'll show you that so you guys can see the difference. Totally okay as well. Everyone has a little bit of a different preference of how they like it to look or just packaging it in general. And again, this is three ounces of cotton candy. This is actually a really decent amount of cotton candy. And our last one. So just to kind of show you the difference, this is like two bigger puffs, you could say, of cotton candy in it. And then this one, we did a few pieces. So forms in there a little bit more. And then one last one, we're just gonna use super big pieces. And again, I did a little bit of a different technique with this one. This was, I just stacked little ovals all the way up. So all of them super simple. And again, this bag, really nice and thick. Again, it's such a, a really good barrier from the moisture. It will last a really nice long time. So now I will do Mylar bags. All of these are really fun options whether you're selling at a fair and um, you're packaging up for an event for a wedding or a baby shower labels custom labels can be added to any of these types of packages even the containers um, you can really customize it and make it cute to fit any event uh, you can order it in different options we've done these mylar bags with a craft paper finish and a circular window, clear window, so you can see the cotton candy. Mylar comes in clear as well, so there's a ton of great options when it comes to the Mylar bags as well. And then for the Mylar, I kind of just try to, again, make it just a little, very gently push it together, make it a big enough size so that it can get in there. And then I really, again, just try to push from the top gently until it's full. And you can see that this one is totally full. And I, when I push on this, same thing. It just has a little bit of a spring to it. Don't want to compact it. And then just going to zip this up. It's nice. Keep it nice and clean where the, the zip is so that you can close it, get a full closure on it. Same thing here. I'm just going to take a little bit at a time and gently slide it in. Needs a little bit more, you can see. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more in the top. Again, back of my hand, tuft it down, just below the line, the Ziploc line. That one's closed. And one last time. Turn my heat up a little bit. Again, with the same thing with the Mylar, I'm really just trying to stay along the edge and tuck, 
tuck, tuck, tuck in the side once it's all in there and then gently press down with the back of my hand. Same thing, just tuck, tuck, tuck. And then now that it's in, back of my hand and one more because this one's not quite full enough yet. And tuck. Once again, it's just below the Ziploc line right there. Zip it up and now we will heat seal our backs. Let me turn that down, turn the machine down. So again, we have our Mylar bags, which come in so many different colors and options. The three mil bags, these also come in different sizes as well. We actually make a very cute, small, square, clear one that only holds one ounce of cotton candy. We do like a circular a sticker, custom sticker on the front. It's super, super cute. So these do come in different sizes as well. And you know, if you're packaging it yourself, you can find so many options. And then our containers. We don't need to heat seal these. And I did want to mention, we made champagne, cotton candy. I just grabbed some random containers in the kitchen. So um, they don't have the correct labels and I apologize. All right, so I will bring over my heat sealer. You can get these heat sealers on Uline. They're perfect and we love them. They last pretty much forever as well. We've had this one for years. I just put the open side of the bag, try to lay it as nicely as I can down. Hold it down for just a minute. And you've got your line, your heat seal. And then with this machine or with these bags, these holes are for a wicket. So that is when you are doing mass production these bags all came on a wicket so you just take one off at a time it was a plastic thing holding them so we heat seal this is technically the bottom of the bag we heat sealed it and now we just cut that wicket area off turn it back over and there's still a hole here for retail hanging if you wanted to or just they're cute like this too and then you can envision it but cute label whatever design on there let me turn off my machine. It's nice and cooled down now. We'll do a couple more just so you guys can see the technique and what we're doing here. I do recommend too, just trying to like squeeze as much gently again or getting out as much air as you can out of the bag. The more air, more moisture you can get out of this bag, the better, the longer they're going to last. So again, we're here. Gonna just going to cut off the wicket. get that little spot turn it over and we've got our three ounce bag these bags are really popular um, for fairs especially carnivals school carnivals the big bag is really nice if you're not going to be spinning live especially at an event these three ounce bags are perfect as you can see super fast for the heat sealer I highly recommend these bags for larger events. And again, they have this hanger so you can get retail hangers all over a tent or whatever it is you might have and just hang the bags everywhere and it's just, it, they're fun. The Again, the containers, we don't have to do anything with. They have an awesome seal. This is, in case anyone's wondering, this is a Deli Cube Plastics Deli Cube container. Cube Plastics is the company. And the size of this container is a 32 ounce container. They make them also in 16 ounce I believe, and possibly eight ounce. Uh, the 16 ounce is the exact same width, just half the height. And those work really nice for flavors, for weddings and different events. If you're making high volume favors for an event. Okay, same thing, Mylar, we're just going to heat seal across the top. The Mylar is a little bit thicker, so it takes a minute more in the heat. No cutting or anything necessary, it has a nice, seal we're good to go so I'm just gonna do that with the other two so you guys can see and I also heat seal these ones uh, above the tear line or right at it so when customers go to open they can tear it open it's ready to go and the last one mylar bags are perfect as well for favors 
They're really good for events as well. These offer the most protection uh, when it comes to a bag that you can get for the cotton candy. Awesome barrier with mylar. And they last a really long time. So that is the what we have today for packaging cotton candy. Hope there were some useful tips for all of you cotton candy bosses. Keep it sweet.